Hey friends, Old Minnow Boy here, out on the ice again this morning. Wanted to take just a quick minute to give you a quick review on the EYOYO underwater fishing camera. Now this is a very popular uh, kind of entry level budget underwater fishing camera uh, that's really kind of uh, you know been all over the fishing Facebook groups and uh, lots of chatter about this camera. Uh, it is a budget option. We're talking about you know getting in with the lowest model at like uh, 120, 130, 140 bucks. And so uh, I actually picked up two of these this year. I picked up the the cheapest one, the 130 dollar version first, and then I did go ahead and purchase the upgraded one, uh, the 720p camera version, which is what I've got out here on the ice today. So wanted to take a few minutes to share uh, my experience with these and let you know if if it's worth purchasing. So at the beginning of this season, I wanted to get an underwater camera and looked online and I found this on Amazon, the budget version for, I believe, 130 bucks. And I went ahead and picked one up and I used it quite a few times. And uh, honestly, it was way better than no camera at all. It was pretty cool. And I gotta say, uh, once you use an underwater camera, it gets pretty addictive. And if you get this low end version and you've never used an underwater camera before, you're probably gonna like it because you're not gonna know anything different. However, there were a couple things that I really wasn't happy with with that camera. The primary one was uh, I did buy the DVR version that records internally, but I was not happy with the video quality. Uh, it's not an HD camera. It's actually a, a really low resolution. I think they call it the TV 1000 camera. And so while the image looks decent on the screen of the unit itself while you're using it, the recorded video files have a couple different problems. Number one, they're really low resolution. They're not 720p, they're not HD, they're not even 640 by 480. It's actually a 320 by 240 resolution video. And so again, while it looks fine on the unit itself when you're watching it, as soon as you transfer it onto a computer, uh, it just, it looks horrible. It's very grainy. It doesn't look clear at all. And so if you're wanting to, you know, edit the video and, and create videos to share on YouTube or elsewhere, uh, this is really not the unit for you. In addition to that, the video codec that that unit uses is a really funky, obscure codec. And so even after you transfer the video files uh, from the SD card onto your computer, uh, like Windows Media Player won't even play those files because it's a weird video codec. And so you have to download uh, different software like VLC Media Player or something even to view the files on your computer. And again, because they're such low resolution, they just don't look good at all. And so for that reason, I decided to go ahead and upgrade to the higher model. Now, again, this is still a budget model. We're only talking like 170, 180 bucks, but this has the 720p upgraded camera. And I'll tell you what, it is night and day difference between uh, that cheaper unit and then this upgraded 720p unit. You are getting an HD image with this upgraded unit. Now it's not full HD. This is not a 1080p image, but it is a 1280 by 720p image. And it really looks pretty good. It looks fantastic on the screen here. And once you transfer those video files on your computer, it looks decent there as well. Now, keep in mind if you're you know, recording 1080p footage and you're outputting 1080p content, uh, this is only a 720p image. So yes, it works, but if you scale it up full screen to 1080, uh, it's gonna fall apart a little bit and not look super sharp and clear. But if you're just using it for picture in picture like I've been doing, uh, it works fine for that. Again, this upgraded version does record in AVI video format and it records in two minute segments. And so it's gonna create a new video file every two minutes. And again, this upgraded version has a better video codec that will play on you know, any media player. So Windows Media Player on a PC, uh, anything on a Mac, really any video player will play uh, the video files that come out of this upgraded unit uh, with no need to download any additional player software or codecs. My upgraded unit came with an 8 gigabyte micro SD card and uh, I've recorded six hours of footage on that. So you can fit a ton of video on the included card if you upgraded to a, a 16 gigabyte or 32 gigabyte you could probably record for days on end. So really no concerns and I've been happy with the, the file storage. As far as the clarity of the footage underwater, I'll show you what I'm looking at here. I've got the camera down about 20 feet deep. Now I am in a, a very clear lake here and so we've got really good water clarity. But if you look here, you'll see that 
Uh, I've got my rattle bait, and the rattle bait right now is about four and a half feet away from the camera. So my holes are about four and a half feet apart. And you can see that rattle bait is very crisp and clear there. And then beyond that, I actually do have a dead stick that's uh, about three more feet. So it's about seven and a half feet away. And I'll point that out here on the screen. Uh, you can see it pretty clearly as well, even at uh, you know seven to almost eight feet away from the camera. So uh, it really is a pretty clear and sharp image down there. Now, as far as the build quality of the unit itself, I really don't have any complaints. It comes in this pretty robust metal case. It's got a decent handle and latch on it. Seems to keep everything pretty safe. I've banged this around quite a bit in the jet sled and whatnot, uh, and I've not had any issues with it from a durability standpoint. Now, as far as cable management goes, uh, admittedly, this is not a super clean and handy system. It's not, it does not have a reel like maybe uh, some of the Markham or Aquaview units would have. Uh, that keeps your you know your cable nice and neat and uh, easy to access. Um, however, it just comes on the spool and it's really it's not horrible. Once you have it set up, it it works fine and it doesn't look the prettiest and like the cleanest presentation, uh, but it's very functional. If you do a lot of run and gun on the ice and you know you're wanting to drop down and, and peek around and, and hole hop and whatnot, this is probably not the best unit for that just because of the, the cable management or lack thereof. The battery life is honestly fantastic. It's got a 12 volt, four and a half amp hour battery. And uh, I have run this several times for six and a half to seven hours nonstop. And that is recording as well and not had any problems, still had 25% battery left. So uh, the battery works fantastic and it'll get you out there on the ice uh, recording video all day long if you want to. The camera does have several different positioning points with these little plastic clips that allows you to kind of change the orientation if you want it to, to just sit flat at a 90 degree. You can do that. You can also tilt it 45 degrees down, which is where I usually use it. Um, it doesn't have any kind of stabilization fin or anything. It does have a hook on the bottom. I've seen and heard some people that uh, put a weight, hang a weight from the bottom of it to keep it from drifting too much. Uh, it does drift a little bit, but, but not a whole lot. As long as you have a, a decent camera tripod and spinner, which I would highly recommend, uh, you know, you're not going to be, you know, having to, to swing it back and forth because it's doing a lot of drifting. Uh, just some micro adjustments here and there will generally uh, keep you pointed in the right direction. I will say that the menu is a little bit clumsy and kind of funky to navigate, but honestly, once you have your, your brightness and contrast set, there's really no need to change any of the settings, so I wouldn't really have any complaints there. Now, these do come with different cord lengths for the camera. I've got the 30 meter version. I think they make a 45 meter and then also a 15 meter, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, you know, probably for most people, the 30 meter, that's going to get you down almost 100 feet. Uh, which is more than you would need for most situations. The screen does have two release latches on each side so you can pop the screen out. That's how you access the SD card slot. And uh, you know, beyond that, it seems to work rather well. There's really no other need to, to pop the screen out, but if you wanted to pop the screen out, uh, maybe to position it a little bit differently, uh, to set it in a different orientation or, or a better viewing angle, you can certainly do that. So all in all, I've been pretty happy with this as a budget unit. Full disclosure, I've never used a Markham unit or an Aquaview unit. Uh, but again, if you're just trying to get in uh, as inexpensively as possible, I would highly recommend go ahead and get the upgraded version. Uh, I've used both the original version and the upgraded version side by side, and the picture quality is really just night and day. The upgraded version is going to be way better in lower light. Uh, so, you know, early in the morning and later in the evening, uh, you're going to have a lot more visibility uh, earlier and later uh, in those lower light conditions. And uh, just the, the image quality itself is significantly improved uh, on the upgraded 720p unit. So I think it would be well worth spending the extra 50, 60, even $70 to purchase that upgraded unit, uh, you definitely won't regret it. I would add that if you're taking kids out fishing and trying to get them involved, there is no better way to keep kids engaged ice fishing than having the camera. Uh, it kind of makes it, you know, just like video gaming and they can see the fish coming in and biting. And uh, I tell you what, Zach and I have had a blast with it in that regard this year. I also would recommend, uh, I purchased this collapsible stool. It's got a rubber top on it. 
And so that just kind of helps, uh, you know, you really want to have a nice stable platform for your camera. Uh, I started out just using it on a bucket, a one gallon ice cream pail, and uh, that works fine. But as I'll show you right now, uh, I almost lost the camera down a hole when a pike attacked it. So you really want to have a decent steady base to be able to set it on, uh, you know, in your shanty or wherever you're using it. And so these collapsible stools are really nice, quick and easy storage and provides a really nice stable platform to set your camera on. I hope that's helpful. If you're considering getting into an underwater camera and you're very budget conscious, I think this is a great entry level option uh, to get some visibility under the water. And I'll tell you what, if you've never used an underwater camera before, it is quite addictive uh, and you'll never want to go back to not having one after you started. So check out the EOYO camera online. I've got Amazon links below in the description and uh, you can purchase there. That'll help the channel. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Old Minnow Boy, out.